it was a hotel uh, it was a wedding event hmm. so they they called me up saying that hey uh, i need a banquet position like stuff then i said okay I, i'll be down so i came down alone or i go all the way to sentosa and then while we were waiting at at the hotel um some random guy came up to us and say like are you this and that and I say yeah and then I say uh yeah i'm here for the banquet role then he was like banquet no bro i need you to set up the sound system <laughs> Then you have to understand, bro. Like, as a student, right? When you travel all the way to Sentosa from Pasiris, bro, you are not going to make that trip back empty-handed, man. I was no way was I going to go back without a job, bro. So I told him, yeah, yeah, sound engineer, yeah, yeah. Hello again, DC fam, and welcome back to another episode of the Deep Culture Podcast. This is Fali, your host, and I hope you guys are doing well at home. Uh, today's episode, we have a guest, right, uh, who is going to be sharing a little bit more about his experiences by being the jack of all trades. That's right, the jack of all trades. And I want to dive deeper into what that line actually means in his preference and his understanding of it, because I think it's one of the concepts of life, especially here in Singapore, where we don't really embody, because a lot of us have been taught to, you know, be a master of one. Right and find something that you really like and just do that all the way, but he has been exploring all the different kinds of trades and adventures, and I thought it'd be interesting to have him on and share with us his theory of life of being a jack of all trades and why it can not must but can be better than being a master of one. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Anwar, Mr. Jack of All Trades, to the Deep Culture Podcast. Anwar, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's up, man? Welcome. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for what's the drink. It's <laughs> halfway drank. Halfway drank. <laughs> jemput, guys. Jemput, jemput. Yeah. Yo, what's up, guys? Oh, this is interesting. It's a new concept for the show. <laughs> Let me adjust my mic. Hi, hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hi, Anwar, bro. aka Jack, aka Mr. Jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. How are you, Mr. Anwar? I'm good, bro. Should I just scoot over nearer? Okay, uh, you can. Yeah, I think Whatever. you guys can hear me better, huh? Okay, <laughs> just I just have to give a heads up, huh? This this I'm gonna sound a bit like mad, a bit English, Malay, bilingual, you know. It is what it is. It is huh? what it is, okay. man. It just so, I need you to be raw and authentic. So that's, I that's hope you guys don't get too weirded out by this. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Thanks for deciding to share because when we had this uh, so-called pre-podcast discussion. I think this was one of the topics that really stood out about you, uh, about being a jack of all trades. I think that's mm. a word you used a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've tried everything. Yeah. But you have tried a lot of different things. I I think a lot of Singaporeans have also la. I mean, mm. being in Singapore, a lot of the youths have generally tried as much as they, they could try growing up. Yeah. So, I I'm not the only jack of all trades. We understand that, right? But <laughs> yeah, uh, going to hit thirty soon, and I think I've I've tried quite a lot of things la. You know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Share share with us a bit more about yourself. What are you currently doing, or how did you even get to this point? Uh. Okay. Just just to preface this conversation and uh, mm. this podcast, uh, right. I'm not I'm not talking from a point of like success or anything like that. Okay. Okay. So I'm just average Joe, oh, average okay. Jack, I'm just a normal <laughs> guy. Never. I don't think I've I in my books I've not achieved anything like outstanding or anything I, that I would deem. A success, uh, Just to, to let me. you know, guys, uh, he's okay. a, he's also a valedictorian. So, <laughs> there's <that's> nothing, sir. Say hi, valedictorian. Okay, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So currently now, I, I I work in a Swiss bank. Hmm. Uh, I'm just doing. Uh, I'm in the Swiss bank handling investment platforms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm a bit nervous. I don't. Like, <laughs> I can tell my voice is shaky because I'm sitting beside the podcaster, Fatli, sir. Mr. Angkat, Mr. Angkat. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. How did you get to this point? Because now you... Okay, bro. The, the title is... Yeah, hmm. like... You see, a lot of people think that hmm. if if you want to jump into this kind of position in the bank, right? You right. just have to like complete your degree. You have to do like a banking degree or whatever. And or for now, since uh, banks are requiring you to learn more programming, more software knowledge, right? You just need to finish that. And then immediately after you graduate, you... Apply to the bank with that role, and mm. then you just hope to get. But the reality or the fact is that most of them require two to three years or five years experience, right? So how do you, as a fresh grad, expect to go into this immediately, right? Right. 
Yeah, so unless you are a, unless you are a top scholar or you mm. are someone who with high grades have been puffed out to lead this to to join them straight then yeah but but there's only a very few minority of them that do make it to 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 this role lah or, mm. or to where where it's at in the bank. Uh, but for me, I took the more unconventional path. Okay. okay? Yeah. So when I graduated, uh, or rather when I finished the exams, my final exams, uh, while everybody was making plans to go on their holidays or like to to take a break, you know, before work, starting yeah, work. before starting work proper, I already started scouting for like contract roles. Okay. So I I didn't I didn't set myself up so high, mm. like I knew I wanted to to do something more closer to the game in, okay. in the banking scene, but I didn't want to. Just jump into it straight because <laughs> I know I know for myself like you need to know yourself right. Yeah. I know myself. I'm not I'm not someone who who is up there lah to say. Okay. okay. So what do you mean by up there by the way? Like I I'm not a I'm not like a local uni grad. I'm not someone who who I would say like high flyer have anything. have good connections in the bank or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I don't I don't have any of that. Mm-hmm. So what I did was that during my Final year of exams, I just started scouting for any contract roles that mm. was open. So back then, contract roles were not a popular thing. This was like five years ago. Five years ago, contract roles nobody wanted to take them up because you see, uh, as as a degree holder or like someone who who takes uni, right, they have this kind of some uh, okay. Uh, to be blunt, they have this kind of ego, bro. Yeah, okay. Like you really <laughs> pay so much, you study so long, mm. and then. All you are offered is a contract role, mm, right? Yeah. So of course, naturally, and and the contract role doesn't pay much, bro. They they pay the same amount as someone with a diploma mm. would have. They they will offer the same thing. Right. So as a degree holder, you'll be uh, among among the group of friends if you discuss, uh, you would be deemed stupid to take up this role, okay? Because of the pay that they are offering so low, mm. right? But I didn't see it that way, lah. Yeah. You know, because the the first things first is always to get the foot in the door. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So any banking and finance students or any student of finance who hope to get in the door of like the big banks and all that, just know that you cannot you cannot just walk in straight and and hope to walk into the investment floor and just you know settle yourself <laughs> yeah. in and all that. You know you have to you have, you to, have know, to work your way up. Yeah, you have to know yourself, your caliber, and you have to work your way up. Yeah. Mm. So I, I took up the contract role. It wasn't. It wasn't glamorous, lah. Like, all I did was uh, documentation checks, bro. Mm. Legit, for one and a half to two years, all I did was to see whether signatures match. That's all. Oh, that's all, bro. I just needed to see, like, okay, for any clients, like they submit any documents, I just need to make sure that their signatures match. Right. That's all. <laughs> for I did that for two years as for one and a half years as a contract staff. Yeah. Mm. And then I got converted to perm. And this was in operations. I, I was still doing operations. Right, right. Yeah. So operations contract for that long, but uh, within the contract role itself, uh, doing operations in the bank, I moved from uh, handling different types of documents. So one of the one of the documentation type that I handled uh, for a long time was relating to investment products and services. Mm. Okay. So when you handle that kind of documents, you naturally liars with the team that is handling investments. investments yeah. yeah. So from there, you know, you put in a good work, put good work for them. Uh, they they start to recognize lah. Yeah. yeah. So how that's you... that's how I I jump into the team lah. Ah, yeah. I see. I okay. wish I could say my my manager's name lah. It's, <laughs> it's the guy that, it's the guy that pulled me in. So I do owe him a lot lah. Shout out lah. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 But let's go back. A bit, a little bit. Okay. You, you're now in the banking industry. Let's go deep. Let's go deep. <laughs> How did you even? Okay, I'm assuming because of the title of this episode, also the jack of all trades, right? Yeah. Banking is where you are right now. Yeah. I don't think it's the end goal. I don't know if you want to be doing that until you retire. No. But how did being a jack of all trades end you up in the banking? Bro, it's like, how how do we, how do we even get to where we, where you are now? Right. right, how do you even get to where you are now? <laughs> you you know, you 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 go through life. You you take things one at a time, and then you just end up where life takes you. Ah, yeah. like mm. for me, um, the reason why Fatli calls me the Jack of all trades <laughs> is because my first job that I ever took up, right, 
when I when I just finished O levels was uh, we I kind of work as a dishwasher. Okay. Uh, for sets, mm. sets S A T S ah sets, right. sets. Just so I don't mispronounce <laughs> that sets in flight catering. So this is the place where if you guys fly uh, S I A. And then you 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 eat your meals and all mm. that, right? Let's say tak habis ah, you don't finish your meals, right? Send it back to the students. The students put it back into this uh, metal container. So this metal container uh, is full of food that is unfinished, bro. Oh, yeah. And it is nasty because basi, yeah. like it, it gets rotten time, and spoiled. Yeah. yeah. Because the, throughout the whole duration of the flight, and it's like towards where you are going and you come back, and when you come back, that is when you clear the containers. Oh, so even if let's say from Point A to point B, they won't clear it at point B. Yeah. It has to come It's, back. It comes back to the Singapore Center to be cleared at the in-flight Ooh. catering center. So it will take that long, right? And it gets nasty, bro. <laughs> it gets nasty, like the smell. <laughs> oh man! And I was like, I just finished O levels then. I just needed uh, some money, lah. You know, mm. you holidays. You want to enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. So naturally, I wanted to find a job. Me and a few of my uh, secondary friends. Yeah, mm. Siglap Sec. Then after that. Oh, Siglap Sec is no more. Yeah, no more. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. So me and a few of my Siglap Sec uh, friends, we we took up this job. Uh, we had to clear this container load, so it just goes through a belt, and then you just clear out the the unfinished food. And bro, it was nasty. So there was this one time where they needed more manpower, so I had to bring in some friends over. Ah. Right. So I brought in like a bunch of three friends. They came down. It is at the basement. So we came down to the basement. The moment the lift door opened, right, they smell the <laughs> rotten, rotten air. Bro, one of them puked into the nearest bin, and left, bro. Seriously, they left. They didn't even take out the job. Just left. And then it's like, wow, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it must be damn nasty, yeah. Dude, it's nasty, bro. That that is the part where they clean out the food. So within that job itself, I I moved over to some to the to the higher floor where they prepared the food. Right. Yeah, and you and it's it's sanitary lah. I'm not I'm not gonna <laughs> give SIA <laughs> shit or scary kind of from there. No lah. But I mean, I I work inside there, so I I think I have the right to say it lah. Mm. Like uh. They they the way they prep the food and all that so I I got involved into that like uh, started doing the meal preps and everything hmm. and saw basically how they work lah mostly I would do night shifts because the the older people would want to take the, the day shift so me right. and my friends would just do night shifts and yeah you know, as as bad as that job is it's a lot of memories were made lah it was it was a fun thing to do when you are young bro hmm. when you have When you are young, when you have no commitments, yeah, it's it's the best thing to do. Ah, uh. okay. Yeah, but why that though? Why why dishwashing? I mean, when I'm thinking back about uh, it was O-Levels, the, it's probably 16. It, yeah, 16. it was the only job that was available. Ah, uh, back group. then, like wow, O levels was how long ago? Yeah, oh. my it's like <laughs> 2007, bro. But back then, right, you don't really have like uh Telegram or you don't really have uh places like Facebook where where mm. you can just reach out if you got any lobang or what yep. so you had to like find through what newspapers newspapers through friends all that so mm. like and and this was the thing that came out the fastest like they they just wanted someone immediately so i just got grab it up and right. then just go for it ah mm. but from that sets in flight catering so there was a contractor that uh, we see day in day out uh Over in the same office, mm. and he spotted uh, the group of us. Uh. Okay. So the group of us, we, we were quite close, and then he offered us another job, which mm. is to finish building up a ship, bro. Yes, you yeah. heard that right. Is to finish a ship, bro. It is to build a luxury yacht. I think it was a ten ten story high luxury yacht, Oof. and to finish it, they were at their final month or final few weeks of completion. Mm. And the ship had to make birth by a certain time. So, like, uh, for those who don't know, when when your ship is ready and ready to go out, or when the ship is being built, when they want to roll out, it's called make birth, lah. So they they make birth to the mm. ship. Okay. Yeah. So, bro, 16 year old, I was damn small. Bro. <laughs> I was a small guy, and I think the biggest guy among them among us was Mega. Bro. Oh, Mega, Mega was also in it with me. Right. So Mega was there with me, and we we finished building this ship. It was like. It was about maybe eighty eighty five percent completed okay. structure wise. Yeah. But when we went in, it was still very bad, very bad state and all that. 
So a lot of work had to be done within that within that few weeks. The last fifteen percent was a lot of work. Yeah, it was a lot of work, a lot of finishing up mm. touches, final touches. When you yeah. say finishing up, as in what painting or uh, shifting of furniture? Yeah, f- shifting of furniture, painting, finishings. You know, they they have a lot of uh, a lot of. You know, like how when you do a renovation of the mm. house, then the final part, the touches and right. all that, yeah, you you kind of have to like finish it up, but it's still a lot of work yeah. in terms of cleaning and everything, ah, uh, yeah. yeah. But they paid higher, uh. so we were. Oh, we, because of the time. Yeah, time they they paid higher. I think if I'm not wrong, it was like ten bucks an hour, and bro, at that time. Yes, uh, that time ten bucks an hour it was good, <laughs> but it was all the way at Sembawang Shipyard, ah. Uh. Mm. Yeah, so we did that for a while. But the fun part about that was that when the ship was done. And had to had to make uh, make birth. We get to travel with the ship for a while, lah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it was quite kind of nice to like sit down at, at the <laughs> ship that you built, and yeah. then you just travel open waters, and you are like sixteen at this time. It's, yeah. Bro, the feeling is amazing. So you travel out in the night, you get to see the stars. Oof. Yeah. Can you imagine it's yeah? It, it was the best, ah. Yeah. So for me, okay. So for me, the thing that that stands out is that at sixteen, I believe. Those who have to work will go out and work, lah. They will find the normal jobs. But mm. for most of us, I don't believe that we will be out there finding part-time jobs or trying to do, especially hard labor jobs like this, mm-hmm. right? So, why do you think that is so? Like, what is it that about you that drives? I know you wanted to spend money on holidays and all. Yeah, that, right? it's no, bro. I bet at that point in time, I wasn't like motivated or anything, bro. It's no. just like <laughs> it's just allowance money. Right. I just wanted allowance money. It's. No, as if my parents didn't give me. My parents give me give give us allowance money. It was enough, but we wanted more because uh, at that point in time, I think I was into like going going to gigs and shit. Okay. Yeah. So so I really love to go to like those. Uh, well, it's gonna sound stupid, so like <laughs> like this scar. You scar, know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all these gigs and all that at the Esplanade last time. They they had all these all these gigs that were quite fun. Ah. Hmm. Yeah. So we wanted to go there more often wanted to have more money to spend and these things usually like stretch out to the night mm. so as a as a kid when when you, you go out fare? until night yeah you kind of like <laughs> stuck there one, right so you need money uh, yeah so that that was the main reason i was doing it uh, just I for see. the money you know but but in retrospect it it was a good like learning experience uh. yeah yeah it was a good it, maybe not learning experience because you cannot learn so much about that But it was just a good experience growing up, ah. Mm. Yeah, to have gone through all that. Yeah, it definitely built you up at a young age to not be afraid to do the tough work. The hard labor. Yeah, the hard labor. As I think, as as a kid, I wasn't really afraid to go and do the dirty jobs. Mm. Yeah, so that that was what I took from the experience, ah. Yeah, I mean, which sixteen year old? I mean, I, I would yeah, think... Me and my friends. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the 16-year-old that But would I do... But I mean, it. yeah, I mean, the, the first job, especially the one with the nasty food smell, the one that was, uh, had gone, the food that had gone wrong, yeah. gone bad. So I will remember that for life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. how many of us 16-year-olds out there would, I mean, not us, I mean, the then 60-year-olds, would have gone and done that? I don't think it's many of us. I personally wouldn't. You know, I thought, be an adventure, you know at that point of time, I actually thought a lot of people are doing it. <laughs> I thought it's a normal thing. Like when I was doing it, I thought like, like this is something like everyone is doing. Ah, uh. hmm. yeah. In is my head, I thought everyone was doing it. It it was purely <laughs> normal. Yeah, to do it. You thought it was part of the grind. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, because some of some of my friends they work like fast food and all that. Hmm. That is hard labor. So yeah, that's right. true. That's true. That is tough, man. Like for you to work in a fast food joint, it is tough, bro. Yeah, but I mean, fast food joint at least it doesn't smell bad. Don't This know, one, I mean, you never had been there, <laughs> so we didn't know. <laughs> your yeah. friend puked, man, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's a big thing. Yeah. So okay, so after you did uh, the ship, mm. the boat yard yeah. labor thing, what did you go on to do after that? Wow. Uh you see, I, I did so many things. I I need to. I There's had a, a hard time <laughs> to recall all these things. So, um, after that, I think I did. Banquet job for a while. Okay. Yeah, I did like hotel banquets and all that. This was all while you were studying. Um, studying in between holidays and all that stuff. Ah. Yeah. So during the holidays, why didn't you want to take a break, bro? Not give money, bro. I yeah. mean, don't have to go anywhere, but as in, why not just chill, hang out with friends and. Yeah, we did that. So, so you, I, I did that while working. While yeah. working, you can still do it while right. working, right? Yeah. Doesn't mean like doesn't mean that you you do your work. You cannot enjoy after that, what? Mm. Yeah. So I I was I was very grateful because I think, 
uh, when when I finished my O levels and during that period, like my parents started to give me more freedom. Mm. Like I don't know why. Like they give freedom to for me to explore. Yeah. And then they give freedom for me to go to all these music concerts and all that right. stuff. So it, it, I was very grateful for that because they gave me time to enjoy. Mm. Yeah. Besides the fact that I'm also working, I think I, it's, mm. I do have time to enjoy. Yeah. Is it because like you know they see you working now then a the threat? They see you as probably more responsible. As a no lah, I think I think they won't deem me responsible <laughs> at sixteen years old lah. But but uh, one thing my parents always taught me is that you see they whatever job that I, I was telling them I was about to do, mm. they never discouraged it. Okay. They always said no matter what kind of job, they will always tell me like do your best in it. Mm. Yeah, don't slack off. Right. Yeah, be like um, have some amana. Hmm. Have some what? What is amana in English? Ah, bro, you asking. Have me, some uh, Malay, right? I'm my Malay. <laughs> integrity, yeah. Integrity, okay. Integrity <coughs> in the job. They may not hmm. be paying you like what thousands of dollars, but they are paying you money, so you better do their job, ah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what my parents taught me to do, ah. Yeah. Hmm. So there wasn't for them. Did they have any particular goal for you in terms of like what kind of job or? No, bro. Like, um, even in in secondary school, right? They. They wanted to push me towards doing like, uh, like sciences and all that lah. But mean. but I was also involved in the beginning part of secondary school in doing arts. Right. So naturally, I think as a parent now, if let's say like any of your kids say they want to do arts, right? Mm. Bro, I would freak out, sir. Like how are you gonna feed yourself if you want to do <laughs> arts, right? Yeah, but but not my parents lah. They they would say like, like if you want to do art, then go all out for it lah. Mm. Yeah, join the like the special arts program that Siglap used to have and all that. Yeah, yeah so so that's what I did lah. Okay, so yeah. interesting that you mentioned from your point of view or well, perspective is that if your child says he wants to do art, you start freaking out, right? No, like I like if I think in retrospect I would. Mm. I would. Or in retrospect. Yeah, in retrospect I would okay. like much um I think majority of the parents if let's say your your child wants to do arts in mm. Singapore. Right. You starve to them, bro. <laughs> like, why? Why you gonna eat? Right? But do you believe that, though? Um, Currently, I think if if see arts is very broad. Mm. You need to you need to know your niche. Yeah, you need to know your niche. But at the same time, you need to explore a lot of avenues in art. Right. Right. So, art has a very late maturity. Mm. Yeah, and and it has to be something that you're passionate about, lah. Right. I I don't think you will starve to death because artists are creative. Hmm. They will know how to survive. They will yeah. find ways. They will find ways. Yeah, and they are very important, bro. You like, can you cannot undermine the arts in Singapore. People make it. People who build millions or billions of dollars in businesses, right? Hmm. Or just the average Joe. Let's say you work in a professional setting in an office, right? At the end of the day, right? You go back and chill with Netflix. Right. 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 People who <laughs> create arts. You watch a movie. People who create arts. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, have so you ever been in a uh, arts industry? No, work? never, never. Mm. But I, I do appreciate the arts. Ah, no, but I, you did go to gigs and all that. So that was. I mean, that's music. Ah, yeah, yeah. Music to arts. to me, yeah. Okay. So you saying sorry? Just now I cut you off. Which one? Just. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, like I, I appreciate music also. Lah, that's yeah. to me that's deemed as one of the arts. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but I'm trying to recall. I think I I did like after. That um, after secondary school, after the shipping job, or like not shipping lah, but you know build build the building ship, yeah. bro. This this shipping building thing, right? I was doing like with a bunch of banglas, man. Hmm. Like we worked literally with the bunch of banglas, and yeah, we we were just one of them, bro. But and what's that feeling like? For many of us, I don't think we've actually worked with banglas, so. Uh okay ah, I'm okay with them. Like, but isn't like I I mean share with us a bit more about um, what it's like working with banglas. A lot bro, of us have that stereotype about yeah, them. Yeah, so. bro. They people don't know how much they sacrifice to come here. Mm. If if you guys only knew, man, like um, in in Sabang Shipyard, they would go there in the morning, and then they would get like packets of food mm. delivered to them. And the food is like mainly white rice and like maybe some kuah at the side, some curry. sides mm. curry and all that. It's quite disappointing. But for us, we were you see even back then when we were kids, that like, there was that divide, you know. Um, When we were sing- when we were labeled as Singaporean kids, we were able to dine with the shipping crew. So the shipping crew is separated from the labor workers. Shipping crew comes from one of the one of the countries. I forgot. Maybe it's Norway or it was a 
It was a foreigners. Yeah, uh. foreigner crew. Hmm. So they have their own catering. They have their own setup, and their catering is good. Ah. Uh. Hmm. So we get we get to eat that. We get to eat with them instead of the the foreign workers yeah. who who just you know were treated differently. Yeah. So you get to see that at such a young age, and yeah, they they sacrifice a lot to come here, and and I think they are being underappreciated. It was only. During this period, this COVID saga, that I think we we give them the we give them the appreciation that yeah. that is due. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, going into that will be a whole other co- type yeah, of conversation. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but okay. So going back, so shipping arts for me when you mentioned arts, you you didn't dive into it. No, I didn't. I didn't dive into it. I just I just like it, lah. Yeah, like but it, I don't yeah. I don't dive into arts. Yeah. yeah, but after that, I think um. So after the shipping, I did. Banquet job, so mm-hmm. that that was normal hotel serving. I think a lot of Singaporean youth do it. Uh, this mm. is something. This this the banquet was where I saw a lot of kids around our age at that time, right? Uh, from different secondary schools doing it. Mm. So it was quite a common thing to do. Okay. Oh yeah, in JC, uh, I did some camp instructing also. Ah yeah, yeah. That, that was also through a friend. So I I did that. I think camp instructing is. Uh, or facilitator is is quite tough, bro. It's you have to keep your energy yeah. levels up, and my energy level is not up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like you. So your it's energy yeah. level is no, bro, through the no. roof, bro. So yeah, I uh, camp facilitator did that for a while. Did it with like Matno, I think Haikal was right, there. Right, right. The Mirun, the yeah, camp, all the camp guys. Correct, Mega also. I think Mega Arif was there also. Yeah, some of the the whole clique, bro. Yeah. Like, if you guys don't know, right? We where do we know each other from? GC. Yeah, <laughs> way back, man. Yishun Junior College. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. So I did camp facilitator, and uh, so one of the interesting jobs that I fell into was uh, becoming a audio engineer, bro. So yeah, I I I remember it was it was a job offer at. Um, where's that place? Ah, um, it was in Sentosa. In Sentosa. Yeah, in Sentosa. For parties and gigs. Or? No, it it was a hotel. It was a hotel. Uh, it was a wedding event. Hmm. So they they called me up saying that hey, uh, I need a banquet position like stuff. And then I said okay, I, I'll be down. So I came down alone. Or I go all the way to Sentosa, and then while we were waiting at at the hotel, um. Some random guy came up to us and say like, "Are you this and that?" And I say, "Yeah," and then I say, "Ah, uh, yeah, I'm here for the banquet role." Then he was like, "Banquet? No, bro, I need you to set up the sound system." <laughs> then you have to understand, bro. Like, as a student, right, when you travel all the way to Sentosa from Pasiris, bro, you are not going to make that trip back empty-handed, man. I was no way was I going to go back without a job, bro. So I told him, "Yeah, yeah, sound yeah. engineer. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm that guy." <laughs> then it's like you sure or not? Then I was with this other guy that that also came thinking that it was a banquet job. Yeah, I was like, hey bro, just follow my lead. Then he was like, okay, okay. Say yeah, yeah, we we are the guys. So he said, okay, okay you just sit, stay put. Um, we're gonna I come back to you ah. Then for thirty minutes we took out phones, YouTube. How to set up all that shit? So we just we were just watching that. We were just watching that. Then we're like, oh, oh this one. This is how you set up this. How you set up that. The the models of that. Yeah. The equipment and all that. Yeah. So then I tried the guy. So the guys yeah. said like, um, okay, come follow me. Then he just brought us to this AV room, and then like wires, mics, everywhere. Like those soundboard, the portable one was everywhere. Then we were just like, okay, grab what you need to grab, ah. Hmm. Because this this was a setup for a wedding exactly. and a birthday party, hmm. like a really grand birthday party for those uh, elite elitists, okay. uh. uh. yeah. Then, so it it was for them, hmm. and then this guy he was a one man team. He had no time to train anything. So me and this other guy we just tag along. Then we, yeah lah. It actually is quite logical once. You get the hang of it, okay. But the time frame to get the hang of it was like thirty minutes. I know. Yeah, that's all. Lah. <laughs> yeah. So the wedding, oh my god, bro! I feel so bad, sir. Like the wedding, the sound was wasn't good, bro. Mm. It wasn't good. But um, the good thing, the blessing in disguise was that the musician for the wedding, he was he was such a nice guy, bro. He he had an amazing voice also. So 
he came up to me he could tell that i didn't know how to do the setting because you know you have your eq volume and all yeah. the settings right to do then he was like hey bro um like when when he was mic testing he tell me to to tune things up and tune things down mm. then i was just like i i couldn't get it right so he was like hey no 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 like bro you new here then that's it bro it's like my first day so i just came here so. then he was like hey don't don't stress bro then he set everything up for me uh. he was like adjusting this and that and i said okay now it sounds good because before that when the mcs were talking there was so much feedback <laughs> And everyone was looking at me. That was like, what? <laughs> I thought Am you were even another guy. The other guy had to set up the birthday, so it was two <laughs> events concurrently. Yeah, <laughs> stress, bro. Uh, yeah, I can stress. imagine. So the thing that I, the question I have in my head is, if for me, right, if I were to be put in that position where mm. I, I came for a banquet job, but now mm. I have to do a, be a sound engineer, and I have no idea, no experience, or yeah. nothing. I know you don't want to go back empty-handed, but at the same time. I'm pretty sure you don't want to go and mess up somebody's wedding. <laughs> yeah, we we yeah. didn't even know it was a wedding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, what gave you the confidence to say, yeah, this is this is something I can do? Yeah, because when when you do like um your my first few jobs, right, you mm. kind of like build some confidence in yourself. Okay. Even at such a young age, you you build this confidence. Or when you are young, you're kind of dumb. Like just say, yeah, I can do anything. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> you can do anything you want. So you start. I think that that was where it started to develop my mentality in like. Oh, uh, you know you can do whatever you want to do. Mm. Just have to like prep for it. Although a little bit more time would be appreciative. Uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more than 30 minutes. Yeah, uh, more than 30 uh. minutes. Uh. <laughs> Come on, give this guy a break. Ah, uh. mm. yeah. Yeah, man. So you've done a lot of that, and this is just during your study time. This was education. Uh, yeah. This was during like before I even finished JC. Yeah. yeah. I mean, then just from that that's probably like you can only start working after sec 4 probably sec 3 mm, sec yeah 4. i think it, the legal age was like 16 but back then i do see people working at 15 years old yeah, right like part time like, yeah. uh, max and all this was still a thing yeah this, can yeah. so i mean all these jobs within the span of probably 3 4 years mm-hmm. that's crazy considering that mm-hmm. you know you still got school and you still got that. school you got commitments yeah. and then after that, i don't know about bgr yeah but what's bgr boy girl relationships oh yeah. no lah <laughs> don't have all that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you know considering all that you still managed to put in time to get all this work done and this experience done and then i also know that afterwards during uh, while you were studying uni you also did businesses oh yeah you had a different. bit of a bit of dabble into that lah yeah. you know No, Shape that was in uni. That that was after. when I started work proper, bro, in the bank, in the bank. During the bank itself. Yeah. So, uh, when when I started working in the bank, mm. uh, when I did my contract job, it was during the contract job that that I started. Uh, Are you allowed to work well, uh, to do this well? Yeah. I asked the permission of my line manager. Okay, it was so cool with yeah. it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, back then I was uh, doing operation ops mm. and um, yeah. So me and my friends, it was Ramadan. Right. right me me and my friends uh we we were just hanging out at at Gilang Bazaar uh mm. shout out to Ims uh Martin Mahe like the group of guys i think Kairi also helped us in the setup and yeah a, a lot of them uh. um we were just hanging out and then we were seeing like shops being set up this was this was really like much like a few days into the Ramadan uh. okay Yeah. Ramadan is the fasting month. It's the yeah. fasting month. Yeah. So so we we were at the bazaar and we were looking at businesses being set up and mm. we were just chilling over there lah. So we saw like businesses being set up and then we started talking like, hey, you know, uh, how much can they make? Huh? Like you know, there's always that curiosity right yeah. when you go to, through a bazaar. I'm sure you guys wonder, like, whether it is a make or break it, right? Yeah. So, Are they doing this just for fun or is it like, exactly or livelihood? Yeah. Yeah. So we and when we hang out over there, we start to notice there was this one ape uh, by the roadside that everybody was going to to pass some money, bro. He was like underhand he, or like uh, like straight up pass straight him up. some cash, <laughs> ah. Yeah, he he was this ape, very chill, mm. but wearing a nice watch and all that, mm, ah. mm. Yeah. So we kind of assume that okay, maybe this is the Tauke, the big shot. Yeah, the Tauke who owns the some of the stalls. Mm. So. I think one of uh, I think Martin or was the one that approached him and asked him like whether uh, he was a Tauke and he had stalls up for rent. Uh. Right. Yeah. So they told him that uh, he has a few slots. That night we we walked to some of them uh, available lots, and then he pointed us to some where we might be interested to set up. Uh. Yeah. And that that was insane, bro. We were just like hanging out. From one moment we were hanging out. 
to the next this apik was showing us like okay you want to get this stall over here and then to the next like uh they asked hey, how want to do or not want to do want to do <laughs> suddenly we became <laughs> stall owners at the bazaar yeah so <laughs> we we got that we got that stall area and we didn't know what we wanted to sell that was classic <laughs> classic rookie mistake we had no idea what we wanted to set up we just was curious into into what we want to do yeah but we had no idea what to set up so uh it was more like a case of do first thing later right? yeah but uh <laughs> to to be fair i i i do like you know keep a lookout or of things that could be potential businesses right. in my everyday life you know sometimes when you pass through you you just want to you just observe things and then you you think that maybe this could be a good business so mm. i do have at the back of my head a list checklist of things that that can be done mm. and one of it was uh drinks that that we used to have at b point bro last right. time when when mm. we were be able to go to jb not b point benafi benafi yeah. yeah so we would drive out to benafi a lot and when we were there uh one of the drinks that the the waiter uh, offered us was a uh, uh what they called it uh uh teh tiga layer mm. yeah teh tiga layer, layer and there is also bandung tiga layer but when we look through the menu there wasn't there mm. so we kind of like built a relationship with this waiter for him to like sort of tell us that this drinks exist ah. so every time we go there we will order that we will order this this two types of drinks the the teh tiga layer, tiga layer and bandung tiga layer which now you you go to like toast box or maybe like uh papa rich you would see those drinks mm. on the menu now but back then it, it didn't exist in singapore ah. And what basically is the tiga layer actually? Uh, it's gula melaka. Uh, it's it's uh, carnation milk if I'm not wrong, <laughs> and tea, and and oh, tea or bandung. Yeah, either right. one. Yeah. So so we open we open a small store called Mister Tiga Layer. Mm. Right. Yep. A lot of trial and error, bro. <laughs> yeah. We we. I bet. <laughs> yeah. We basically had only a few days to set up the stall because we went from not knowing what to do anything at all to having a stall and then now we have the idea yeah you have the idea but how do you even make the drink yeah, the none of us know how to make the drink bro. so yeah they they came over to my place we had we bought some ing- ingredients try to figure out and everything and yeah bro, it was insane some of us uh, ran off to like onan road to buy the supplies buy the cups buy the equipment the tong and everything so it, it was It was a super fast, I think two or three day setup, hmm. and then like we had friends who who are designer by nature like uh, Kyrie. We had, I think Akil, uh, Sharif, these guys who are so talented who could just do up like designs on the spot. So so hmm. they they handled for us like the printing, the design, the and everything. And yeah, it looked it looked great, bro. They they really did a good job within like. I think it was like what a day or something. They had one day to to do that, yeah. But it is crazy. It was a it was a rush, ah. Hmm. And bear in mind, ah, like this this bazaar like would run from your booker timing or maybe slightly earlier all the way until midnight. Right. And I had a full time job. <laughs> I had a night. I was gonna bring nine, it up. I had a night <laughs> to six job, bro. Hmm. I had a night like, proper in office attire job like that 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 I had to do. And it was during Ramadan, so literally was working from, I mean nine, all the way until like midnight or later, mm. like on a daily basis, uh, for that one month. Crazy. And yeah, that one month, like, uh, I I was I can't remember. Oh shit, my wife's gonna kill me. So was I engaged back then? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was I I don't know whether I was engaged. I maybe I was engaged I back then. I think you were. Yeah, yeah I think I was engaged already. So it was like hustling for the wedding, uh, and and I see this very often, you know, in 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 our community now that that whenever a couple is about to get married, right? They hustle. They will hustle. They will be that push, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. And I like to see that. I like to see like the like, hunger. Yeah, the hunger. I like to see the creative side of them, like like you would not expect yeah. for them to do, and then suddenly they do it. Wow, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. My cousin who I think got married three years ago during uh, in the lead up to their wedding, I think they even went to the point where they went on a on a, on a game show on Channel Five mm-hmm. just to get the extra yes, income. Yes, yeah. Which I thought was you know you do these kind of things for fun, but you know for yes. them it was about it was the money. <laughs> it was, it was money. the money. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's true. It's interesting. Yeah. So th- that job, uh, that month alone, right? We only slept for like what three three hours, four hours daily, yeah. 
hmm. three four hours daily maybe on a good night yeah right yeah i was like a zombie <laughs> by the end of I it bet. yeah <laughs> but you see when when i was going into the bazaar right hmm. when i wanted to start the bazaar i already had the mindset that i think um this this bazaar would be a good litmus test for me to start a business because the environment is there the crowd is there yeah you just needed a product to sell and and it was a good way to get your feet wet into knowing what are the things needed right. to run a business mm. yeah so definitely uh, my main goal for that was to get some experience to yeah. learn about it yeah i i had a lot of help from uh uze from broti who is doing so well right now like mm. you guys if you all have not been to his shop at Arab Street, Arab Street. Yeah, bro, head over there, man. They have like a lot of new flavors now, and yeah, I hope you can get him on this podcast, bro. He has another story to tell. Yeah, look forward to trying that out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Broti, yeah. So he was the one who actually helped you and introduced you. To yeah, he he gave operations. us a lot, of, a lot of um, advice. He gave us a lot of pointers, what to do and what not to do, and all that. Yeah. So really thankful for that so if you if if any of you guys if you all are listening and you're like thinking if you are at that step where you have a burning idea and you just want to take that leap mm. right if you just want to jump into it right um maybe you uh, one thing you can learn from me is that if you cannot have that courage to go in alone then do like me uh, go in with a bunch of friends hmm. like i had i had my bros to go in with us yeah. together so as a group you feel a lot a lot more stronger you you are, you are not that scared yep. and you guys support each other along the way hmm. and you know i had my uh, wife who who also came down to support yeah. and <laughs> she also did like the the cashiering the cash handling and all that hmm. yeah couldn't have done it without any of them uh. they they really like were the reason why I, i could be able to do that yeah man yeah It's always great to work in a team. I think that's yeah. where the dynamics really helps. Yeah. yeah. But you mentioned also, I remember when you were sharing with me this story, there's a particular thing uh, that you mentioned about ice cubes. Oh, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. So okay, so I think that'll be an interesting fact for everybody. So, fun <laughs> fact, right? If, let's say, you guys see any of the stalls over the uh, drink stalls, uh, specifically to drink stalls, if you see any drink stalls in Gelang Bazaar, right, which mm. now we, we don't get to see them, but back then, if you were to see them or in the future, If you see any drink stalls, and you are wondering how well they are doing, right? So a telltale sign, right? Mm. If you guys want to guess, right? Is 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 not the cups, bro? It's never the number of cups because you can be ordering like thousands and thousands of cups in the background. But a good sign of that business thriving as a drink stall is the number of bags of ice cubes, bro. Number of bags of ice that you order from a supplier will kind of tell you. Okay, bro. This these guys are doing well. Yeah. Who would have known, man? I mean. Yeah. This, we wouldn't have known also. <laughs> like, like, yeah. We we were. We But were why 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 does that determine? Because the the more the more ice you use means the more number of uh, drinks are being pushed out, right. and it's immediate. Like versus the number of cups, mm. you could have like a balance of 500 or a thousand cups in your right. storage. Who would have known? Yeah. Like you could have just bought like. Like a bunch of cups and stack it up, and maybe it doesn't even get used. But ice, you have to you use, have to it use it immediately. Right. Yeah, otherwise it melts. Yeah, interesting so, fact. Fun fact. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing that I I find a ama- uh, beautiful and amazing about you know trying out the different new things. I'm sure there are certain f- things like this that you learn along the way through each different kind of job. Yeah, yeah. From the shipping labor to mm-hmm. you know uh, cleaning up sets. Mm-hmm. So why do you do? Is that the reason? Why you feel jack of, being a jack of all trades is so important? Uh, so like to me, why it's important is in you look at things at the at the bigger picture. Right? I think, oh, this is, okay. So it's a bit hard to explain. Yeah. But yeah. okay, we, when when we are given this life, right? When we are born into this life, right? I believe that what you are tasked to do or what you are given is an incomplete picture of a jigsaw puzzle. Mm. So when you are being born. You only given like a few pieces to complete that puzzle, right. and the more that you go through life along the way, you uh, you collect one more piece, hmm. and you collect one more piece to collect to complete that puzzle. Right. So nice. if you don't, if I don't try out as many things, right, I don't get to collect as much pieces. Hmm. And at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, right, you will be left with an incomplete picture. Hmm. And I and I don't want that. I always want to know what is the big bigger the big picture, picture right? of things. Yeah. yeah. Versus, I mean. 
jack of all trades, master of none, is what we've been told in school, right? Mm. But the full phrase of that, do you know what's the full phrase of that? No, man. It's actually <laughs> it's actually an incomplete phrase, no. Like in secondary school, we were told jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there, bro. It's jack of all trades, master of none. Oftentimes, better than a master of one. Mm. So that is the complete phrase which we have not been exposed yeah. to. So what they are trying to say is that the jack of all trades most of the time is actually better than the master of one. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so from your personal experience though, I mean, I'm not saying that it's going it's wrong to be a master yeah, of one. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with that. It's so But how does a jack of all trades fare in comparison okay, to So the difference if you guys want to know like this is something that uh I've come to the conclusion of the difference between a jack of all trades and a master of one is that the master of one grows up or goes along with life thinking that or being trained that they can only do one thing and do one thing very well. Hmm. But the jack of all trades, right? Like they will go through life and thinking that they can do everything well. Yeah. And do everything equally well. So that's the main difference of yeah. Yeah. If you ask me personally, that's that's what I feel uh, like like I feel that I can do anything and everything. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean you did do almost anything almost and everything. Uh, not everything <laughs> yeah. So okay, so how is that going to play a part in the society? Like do you see a trend right now in yeah. our society? Bro, right now? It is ironic that Singapore in Singapore we hold on to one trait, bro. It is very ironic. You know why? Why? Okay, so if you guys ever like uh drive up on road trips to Malaysia, right? Hmm. What do you see on the roads when you were driving there? What kind of plantation? Uh, palm rubber, trees, right? Rubber plantation. Rubber yeah. plantation, palm trees. So that is Malaysia's uh, natural resource, right? Yep. Um, what is Singapore's natural resource? People. People, right? Hmm. So people know it's people, but do you know what it means to say that? Meaning to say, right? Hmm. As a as a natural resource, when you have people as a natural resource right what you are ex- actually trying to say is that one person in the population yep. is supposed to churn out more than one input so what do you mean by one input no? so take for example the palm oil tree hmm. palm oil tree uh, in malaysia right you can use it for palm oil you can use it for rubber you use it for farming you use it for a lot of things so one palm tree generates multiple outcomes Okay. For and and in turn, it generates a whole e- economy and industry. So if we as Singaporeans we say that people are our resource, then shouldn't it be the fact that one person can not only do one trade but can do multiple trades hmm. as expertise. And it's it's actually quite apparent now that hmm. the fact that you are you are being uh, exposed to skills future and all that, yeah. and the government is asking you to learn more and more and more things. Yep. Isn't that like a clue like hello you guys are not <laughs> supposed to only hold down like one skill no <laughs> like people are our resources you no know? we need to be able to, and and now it's quite apparent because we see professionals who can do grab yeah. deliveries and all that so they are more versatile and mm. when you are more versatile you contribute to a more flourishing economy mm. so the 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 way it plays the role that it plays in a society is that you open yourself up to more market you you let more markets more industries thrive because you are able to adapt right yeah it's a very interesting thing yeah right? i've never heard of that before yeah i mean just had to think about it like yeah like what you say what's what's our natural resource uh, and and mm. everybody knows it's people, it's people yeah everybody <laughs> knows it's people but but if you really think about it what what it means to have people as your natural resource it means that one person cannot be churning out just one output mm. yeah you you won't have a thriving economy that way Right. It, to think about it actually most singaporeans are jack of all trades they can do multiple things mm. yeah Was, but is that the case also everywhere else in the world um no not really that's why, that's why like what you said earlier right mm. it's not wrong to be a master of one also mm. because it, it boils down to individual preference and needs like you need to know yourself individually are you the kind of person who can do one thing and one thing very well right or are you the kind of person who always looks for more things to do. Mm. Naturally, okay, so one of the books that I read from Malcolm Gladwell is called Outliers. Outliers, okay. So he studies the he studies the great professionals or people who have make it big like the Beatles, he studies like tennis players, golf players and all that. So he has this rule of mastery, the rule of 10,000 hours. Mm. 
So rule of 10,000 hours is that if you put in uh, work into one thing for 10,000 hours, you would actually have uh, achieved some form of mastery into that skill. Okay. Yeah. And if you break it down into numbers, right? Let me grab my calculator. <laughs> so let's say an average Singaporean, right? We work about 40 to 44 hours. Lah. Let's say 44 hours a week. Okay. Okay, you times that by one year, you then you get this much 2.2. So you take 10,000 hours divided by 2.2. So that is about four and a half years. Okay, so okay. actually, if you think about it, when you work in one place and you kind of like feel a bit bored already hmm. and you are already at that four and five year mark, right? It's because you have already achieved that number of input hours for mastery. Right. You already have reached that level where you like you know that job very well enough mm. and you will feel the need to grow. That's why people usually jump within yeah. that period of years. Okay. Yeah. It's natural human inclination. Mm. Yeah. It's just natural. It's just who we are. We always look for things to do. To grow basically. To grow. Right? To, to find something else to do. Mm. So take that into consideration. Let's say five years is what you take to master one skill. Bro, you're going to be working for like what? 30 years 30 of your years life? Year. That's like six, five, six, six skills yeah. that you can actually comfortably do, you know. Mm. So which is more exciting to live your whole life doing one skill trade yeah. or like mastering five to six skills? So what does it say about the older generation though? The fact that the older generation actually, for many of them, they stick to one job throughout their life. I mean, they call it loyalty. Yeah, not, not everyone will do it. Lah. Mm. Not everyone will do it. Like, um, But... You see, it doesn't only, it doesn't have to stick to, it doesn't have to apply only to your job. Hmm. It can also apply to your hobbies, oh, your yeah. likes That's and true. all that. Yeah, so uh, for the older generation, you see, they, they built this economy up. They raised us in, in an environment where it wasn't easy. Yeah. They didn't have much choice to go about. So they were told what they were, they, they will do what they were being told uh, and, hmm. and, to, to find this output of creativity, they'll probably just channel it to their to their hobbies and whatnot. Yeah. Mm. But but I, I do agree with you the the older generation do stick to one job yeah. and and they do it all the way through. <laughs> uh. yeah. But they jump within within the industry, yeah. Uh. Mm. Within the company itself, they could be doing other things right. that, that we do not know what, uh, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Okay. Yeah, so that's an interesting thing. I like the fact, I especially like the one that you went into uh, human being the, us humans, us people being the the natural resources of Singapore. Yeah, us humans now, macam kita alien. Sorry, I mean, in people. Because I think yeah. that's, a, that's literally what deep culture also stands for. It's like, mm-hmm. I, I never took taking people as a natural resources. I, ne- I just took it from the surface. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. You just have to think about it on a deeper level. Bro. Exactly, this yeah. This is a deep culture right now. <laughs> so thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I think that about covers what the whole jack of all trades. Your experiences have been amazing to share. And just one more thing. If somebody, I believe our generation basically, mm-hmm. or even the generation that's coming after us, more and more of them are going to come up to, to be wanting to explore these different jobs, these different uh, industries. Yeah. Because I think what's happened is that what the older generation has done for us is they've given us a platform of stability. Yeah, that's right. Where, you know, we have a house, we have uh, stable income, food on the table. So most of us have that at least. So now it's about exploring what fulfills us. So do you, what was your, what would you be your advice for the next generation or even our generation who wants <laughs> to we, try this? We are going to move to the next generation. <laughs> so we are the next generation. <laughs> mm. uh, not to say that Wow, it's, that's loaded, man. Like, like mm-hmm. you have to think about it. At the end of the day, right? I'm still holding down like a normal average job. Right. You, as much as I want to dream a lot, mm. like as much as I have big dreams and all that, right? You kind of still have to be grounded. You have to know that there are realities. Right. Like, okay. Simply put, this is how my wife puts it, lah. Okay. She would say, <laughs> um, "Yeah, you can have big dreams." But bills have to be paid. And mm. that is so true, bro. Yeah, very true. You, yeah. you can have big dreams, but there are still bills that have to be paid. And mm. you cannot run away from that. Yeah. So, um, you want a dream? 
gym responsibly yeah if you are older and mm. if you are like my age I I have like two kids and and a family and a place to call home so kind of have to be a bit more responsible the the moves that I'm making now have to be a bit more calculated but if you are young if you got if you haven't settled down yet you are single uh or even if okay lah maybe you're not single lah huh? <laughs> you they have someone mm-hmm. but basically you don't have major commitments right let's say you don't have major commitments then what is there what is there to lose to think about it like honestly you don't have a house you you're not going to lose that you don't have probably you don't have big overheads yep. you don't have a child that that will you don't have to worry about to go starving excuse me <laughs> so to address the younger generation or maybe this can be a message to my children also oh, okay perfect right? yeah time capsule yeah so um Like what I said earlier, you go about this life trying to complete an incomplete jigsaw puzzle. Right. You don't want to finish the end of it and looking back and think like all you have is an incomplete picture. Mm. Right. Go about doing it. You will you will experience, you will meet uh meet people, you will learn life lessons and come to conclusion of life lessons on your own. Yeah. Like one of the things we didn't talk about was that um One of the works that I did also was I worked as a um, in in a security team in a six star hotel, mm. and and that was insane because it was super rigorous, bro. They it was one of the best security hotel security teams in the world. Right. So to put that up to standard in, in Singapore, but it's being compared around the world, and it was one of the best. It was a very rigorous job, mm. and another job that I did also was I did like in room dining. In a Fullerton hotel where you just serve uh, people, but over there, um, this this was when I was like in uni, and over there I I met mm-hmm. one of my supervisor who was a Malaysian guy, and he basically at that age he taught me a a great lesson of fatherhood. So this guy, this Malaysian guy, right? He he would work twelve hour shifts uh, in Singapore. Basically, he will only sleep a few hours in mm. in Malaysia, and he has a daughter to bring up. And so, like, when when I ask him, like, how does he go about doing that, you know? Yeah. And he says he will only see his daughter at three or four a.m. in the morning, where he wakes her up to prepare for school. And then I was like, wow, bro. Then you're not tired. I said, tired, tired, bro. <laughs> tired, ah, definitely tired. But if you don't find the strength to To hmm. if you don't master up the strength in your times of tiredness, right? Then what he told me was that at the end of the day, you miss your daughter's development. You miss your entire child's development. Yeah. Hmm. So he taught me a lesson that you know sometimes when when you're taking care of the kid and you're tired and all that, hmm. yeah, you you kind of have to master up the strength to be in that moment. But that's very important because if you if you are not there, then you slowly but surely. For all you know, your child is suddenly grown up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, you will pick up all these lessons along the way, um, and it is important for you to learn this at a young age. Because when in one of the jobs I met this, I met of, so usually the people that I work with are a lot older. Right. They are way older who have gone mm. through life. You can see in their face that yeah, they they have really gone through like tough times and all that. Right. So sometimes when you sit down and you talk to them, right? They they tend to open up, hmm. and uh, one of the shortcuts in life, right? That that I've learned is that one of the greatest shortcuts is another man's regret. Hmm. So if someone opens up and tell you about tells you about their regrets, right? You better listen hmm. because it is a shortcut to you to not repeat what he has made. Right. Yeah. What well, is it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you you kind of learn all this and. And go about it in your life when you are younger. Yeah, you you get an advantage, ah. Right. Yeah, you definitely get an advantage. Yeah. So that that's about it, ah. Like um, when 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 I'm younger, ah, when I go through a lot of jobs, I meet a lot of people. That's where I kind of learn that, you know, you meet older people, you get to talk to them, you learn about the regrets that they've been through in life, hmm. and you take that in as your shortcut. So you don't repeat their mistakes. Whatever regrets that they pour out to you is something that they wish they could have taken back years before. Yeah. So you, as a youth, you will have the advantage. Don't don't repeat when you you will come across the same 
crossroads that they yeah. have faced. Definitely, you will come across it, and when you come across it, you will remember that okay, you know this guy told me this before. Mm. Don't do, don't don't make the same stupid mistake. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Understood. That's that's nice, man. That's really insightful, really deep. Yeah. I mean, I have to say because you, how do I put it? There's a balance between just living life, and living. Even though you're living life, you're living it responsibly. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things where, yeah, you can just do. You can do whatever you want. For example, setting up this podcast, you can do it whatever you want. But at the end of the day, I still have to think about how do I pay my bills, how do mm-hmm. I take care of my parents. Yeah. Right. And then all that, all those factors, have to come into play as you grow up. While you're younger, maybe you don't feel it as much because you have, like you said, yeah. less responsibilities. Yeah. You don't have anyone to answer to, uh, basically. Yeah. So. But for you also, uh, yeah. sorry. Like, okay, now I am asking <laughs> the question, bro. Like Go you, for, for yeah. sure, will have faced pressure to find like a normal job. Yeah. To in order to do this podcast running and all, to keep this podcast running. Yeah. And all that, and from the way I see it, you can do like a normal job, bro. You can have like a normal nine to five job while doing this podcast. Yeah. Right. So, are you going to do that? That's the thing. That's a big question. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment, yeah, I see it going on, but I think there has to be certain tweaks in order to make it more streamlined, more efficient uh, for mm. myself. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's it's one of the questions that I have be I was contemplating right in the beginning. Like, can I handle having a full time job and at the same time? The answer is yes, bro. Yeah, you can. You can. You even if you feel that you cannot, you have to, mm. because at the end of the day. You, what you are doing is when you, when you start a business, you are taking a risk, hmm. right? You are taking a risk, and it's something that is uncertain, right? And living in a pressurized society in Singapore, it's always good to have something stable yeah. to root your mindset, so that so that your mentality is not overstressed. Hmm. You you do not overthink on things that are like that are like normal needs, uh, like housing and all that. So that yeah. at the end of the day, if anything doesn't work out. You have not lost out too much. Right. You have had that had that base of stability being built up along the way. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, if you the the bad thing about going all in is that if you lose out, you are left with nothing. Yeah. Yeah. One of the one of the businesses that I did uh recently was an event decor business mm. that I did with Kyrie. So the idea was to do uh wedding decorations and all that. Yeah. So we were we were doing that for a couple of years, and and we were enjoying it as we were doing it because it was quite a good creative outlet space for us. Mm. We we get to do weddings and all that, and I was doing this while 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 I'm working lah, full time. So this job this uh, business was a part time job. We just wanted to see where it was, mm. but uh, where it would lead to. But we reached a point where we were thinking, should we quit our full time jobs mm. to focus on this? Yeah. It will be because you see we were at the point where we were growing but not there yet, so we were at the tipping point and we would and we were talking to ourselves like thinking, will quitting our jobs help push tip the scale? Yeah, you know, yeah. But sometimes you make an assessment and and I'm glad we didn't quit our jobs because a few months later COVID hit, bro. <laughs> yeah, Events man. industry took a toll and. Yeah, you know, it's a really it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah, that yeah, you made definitely. a decision to stick. I mean, I have the same questions as well. I was thinking, like you know, even if I were to not do this full time job, would I be able to interview more people? Would I be able to handle more of the social media? And I can see it being the I can see the answer being yes to some extent that I mm-hmm. would be able to do all those. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, would that be uh, able to justify the the current pay that I'm getting from my full time job? What do you, you mean, know? like? Like your Be- your current pay in the full time job. Yeah. Why would that be? Ab- so if I were to let's say let go of that full time job and focus on this podcast, interview more people, yeah. handle social media, will that be uh, able to pay my bills? No. So so, so, yeah, so you sh- you shouldn't. The reason why I say you shouldn't leave <laughs> your full time job to do the podcast is because y- you can actually interview people. Yeah. More people you can interview them. Um. Okay, look, for example, look at the number one podcast now. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Let's go, bro. Mm. They are the cream of the crop. Bro. Cream of crop. And they started, they started doing podcasting at night, mm. like oddly hours, like yep. one three a.m. Four. It's crazy, bro. So, 
the key to their success is they just grind it out yeah. and they have so much technical expertise they yeah. develop that over the years mm. over the years they develop through the experience the, exactly yeah. technical expertise and they only developed it because they were holding like a normal job bro i mean not normal radio dj is the, not normal the, but the daily job. they they were holding a daily job and and look at what it's led to yeah, yeah. so never underestimate like like having a full time job or don't undermine it mm. don't undermine it if yeah. you have to go out and look for it go for it yeah yeah great advice man yeah thanks bro appreciate it <laughs> 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 all right man uh I'm about done. I think we went really deep into this. I think uh, Anwar here has done a great job in sharing one why he is the jack of all trades. I do what I can. <laughs> yeah. And also like why the concept of being a jack of all trades has its benefits here in Singapore even though many of us have been uh what is that word? Have master been, of one or what? Yeah, have been taught to be a master of one mm-hmm. uh, based on our education system and all our bringing. So it's 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 funny sorry to interrupt yeah, but no. it is it's funny like um when when you look at our education system right mm. we we are being taught we are being forced to learn maybe six to five to six different subjects yeah. science maths and all that yeah. that itself is grooming your mind right to not focus on one thing 100% to you know? yeah. yeah to actually diversify yourself out further mm. but somewhere along the way there's a there's a conflicting like um upbringing lah where you at school you are being taught to explore as much you are being taught to learn this and that but when you go out to the working world stick to one job and stick with it mm. all the way so it, it, there's a bit of there's a clash yeah. yeah yeah that's really true so mm. i hope today's conversation inspired you guys i hope you guys uh can see uh how a jack of all trade eventually turns out to be anyway and also yeah. fat he, and <laughs> <laughs> he under and he downplays it a lot but nah, he was man. also the valedictorian in he, of his cohort in university right so despite all the the job experiences the time that he sacrificed when people were going on holidays uh he actually sacrificed the time to do work to gain experience mm-hmm. and look at where he's turned out to be right and i think he's a his role model in that sense that's like why and I subscribe felt. guys like <laughs> and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> so I am really glad that, that uh, this brother here came on to share his experiences. I hope you guys learned it. Bro, I wish like them and I'm I'm so glad you have this podcast because it's it's good to I I feel so happy to be able to share my story. Hey man. Yeah, the only person who knows this deep uh this this journey that I go through is is my wife. Mm. Yeah, because they these are the the stories that I tell to her like all the experiences right. that I know but yeah, I'm so glad that Now you're going to have a lot of other people watch it. Right? Uh, that's also, <laughs> uh, you know, it's not as if, like, yeah. <laughs> no, but you never know what opportunities this could bring. So, yeah, 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 true. But thank you so much for, for being willing to come on and being supportive of this podcast. I appreciate that. Yeah. Anything else you want to add on before we end off? Um, so, uh, I, I like to end off with, um, you know, when you watch the movie Matrix, Hmm. Then uh, Neo looks at Morpheus and he hands o- and he gives him the option of the blue and the red pill, uh, yeah. right? Hmm. So the blue pill, if he takes the blue pill, I think he took the blue. I, okay, he takes the red pill, but if he takes the blue pill, so what Morpheus is is offering is that you take the blue pill, you wake up to your normal life, hmm. and you never knew what would have happened. Yeah. But if you take the red pill, I, he can show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yeah. Yeah. So same thing in life, bro. You are being offered two choices. One is to live a normal life, and the other is to venture out and explore, and figure out how deep the rabbit hole goes. Yeah, yeah. So I I chose the red pill, and I hope you guys would yeah. would take the red pill as well. Yeah. Amazing, bro. Serious. I think the content that you shared today is top notch. Oh, Thank you yeah, so much for for sharing all this, man. I really hope it inspires you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much Thanks again. Thanks for bro. listening in, guys. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, I do. I, I wouldn't even have known anyone would want to listen in to me. Uh, but thank you so much for listening. In. They will. They will. Yeah. Trust me. All right, man. So, uh, with that, wraps it up. All right, man. So thank you guys once again for listening, video streaming. Uh, if you guys like today's content, do subscribe for more. Uh, hit that like, comment, and share if you like it. And uh, if you want to reach out to Anwai for any business ideas, or oh yeah, I just advice. created like an IG page. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys can follow me. It's Anwar's Cafe. Anwar's Cafe. I got the scar right here, so <laughs> Anwar's Cafe. That's another story as well. If you want to ask him yeah. about that scar, right? Yeah. His link will be his Instagram will be down in the description. So wow, check it out. Down in the description, down in the description box, below, guys. <laughs> Damn. 
Right. <laughs> Bruh. Okay. So yeah, so hit him up. Uh, if you have any questions, he's more than willing to help anybody out. Of course, of course. Uh, right? And uh, so yeah, with that, I think that wraps it up. See. Thanks, man. Great so job, man. thanks again, everyone. And I'll see you guys on the next episode All of right. the Deep Culture Podcast. Ciao. 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 <laughs> Ciao. <laughs>